I'm Dr. Hudson Fries, and I work at the Sanford Burnham Previs Medical Discovery Institute in La Jolla, California. Dr. Fries, glycobiology impacts many aspects of biomedical research. Influence is potentially huge. What's your part? Uh, my part is that we work on and sometimes discover uh, diseases that affect the glycosylation pathway. So we work with, as you can see in the pictures behind me, a lot of patients that we've worked with over the years, and they have mutations in different glycotype genes that influence different pathways of glycosylation. You're not medically trained, you're not an MD, mm. so you work with patients. So how does that work? Explain that to me. Yeah, well, even though I didn't have medical training, uh, some of my experiences, for instance, working with Stuart Kornfeld, Rosalind Kornfeld, and other people uh, along the way, besides my basic science training, taught me that we could uh, actually have a, a big influence on patients and in medicine. And so even though I'm not medically trained, my background uh, with them, as well as, you know, I think an orientation because of my own personal history and my family having a disabled sister enabled me to feel comfortable around patients. So because there was no general understanding of glycobiology among physicians, when those patients seemed to have something amiss in glycosylation, the physicians had nowhere to turn. Glycobiology is seldom taught in a medical curriculum, and even most basic scientists don't know a lot about it. So there was an opportunity. they don't, why don't you tell us what it is? Oh, glycobiology. Well, glycobiology is the study of adding sugar chains to proteins and all of the metabolic steps that go on as uh, a prerequisite to having that happen. And then, of course, once you have those sugar chains on, they can have a variety of different sort of functions, stabilizing proteins, controlling the half-life in the plasma, uh, enabling molecules to signal each other, binding to lectins, a lot of different processes. So if you mutate some of the steps in these pathways, then what happens is that you disrupt many proteins. And we don't know in detail what proteins are disrupted and cause what problems. And that's one of the big challenges in this area of studying glycosylation disorders. That's, that's where the future is going to be. And you, in fact, have de determined many of these. De you have identified many of these different right. disorders. Right, right. And in, yeah, in fact, I think we're probably at uh, about 18 that we've either worked on or discovered ourselves here in the lab. And we have two more in the pipeline, so you know, keep your eyes open. We'll be we'll be publishing that sometime down the line. And so what we do is we look for more patients, have outreach to more physicians, and then the physicians come back to us and say, well, why does the lack of that enzyme? Why does that cause this symptom? And we have to confess that we don't know. That's again, that's where the future is. But what you have learned, you have ended up helping especially with your rare disease day here. Just explain a little bit about how you connect some of these families to doctors and researchers. Mm -hmm. Well, we hold, uh, every year we hold a uh, rare disease day get together. And it's scientists coming to talk about their basic science work, physicians reporting on some clinical studies and sometimes their interaction with patients. And then in addition, we bring in families and those families can choose to participate and listen to the science, or if, if they decide that maybe they're not up for that, they can still talk to the physicians. And then we have a group get-together where the physicians and the scientists and the patients all exchange, and, the, and the, the, the basic scientists now have the opportunity, probably for the first time in their lives, to, to interact with patients and to see the effects of their work on patients. That's a thrill. And you've done that a bunch of times. We've so done it, I yeah. I can imagine. What does that mean to you now, and what does that mean, do you think, for the future of folks who are coming up, say, in your lab? Well, I think um, it's been very satisfying, you know, for us. And uh, sometimes it's even resulted in contributions to the lab because there are many family members that are grateful. And because, again, physicians were not necessarily integrated into it. Uh, rather than contributions, donations going to the physicians, they oftentimes will come to the basic researchers because the families realize we're at the leading edge. Doctors have told them everything they know. We're taking it that next step. So I think that, that's been a formula that we can use to go forward. And I think there's plenty of room to do that for other 
other scientists who may want to go into these. Every time you discover a new disease, it's the equivalent of a whole new research area. Just think about that. Thank you very much, Dr. Fries. You're welcome.